well. So if you consider and you might want to be a Sunday school teacher, be praying about it. And if you uh, uh, think you might, please see Brother Charles Sellers. And uh, we're looking for uh, a Sunday school teacher from 6 to 12. Amen. And uh, so we're looking at that. Also, uh, uh, we are about halfway on our canned goods to open the open to the community. We need some peanut butter and carrots. So we've got carrots, canned juices and canned fruits. I, I guess we have. And uh, uh, other things, and I've seen some folks bring some stuff in this morning. Continue to remember our food pantry and, and look at it. And try not to give no jumbo sizes, just normal sizes for everything. Uh, that, that way it will last and do what we need it to do. So praise God for that. Amen. So uh, uh, we're looking at that. <coughs> we're going to go to the Lord here in prayer in just a minute. And uh, we're going to praise God. Amen. Don't this choir look good this morning? Praise God. They ready to praise God and worship Him this morning. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And uh, so we're just going to have a joyous time. We've got a lot of folks out with some kind of virus or something. So y'all be praying about that. Uh, I can see uh, some of it. Uh, Sister Jeanette told me there were some folks uh, calling in and saying, Pray for me. <coughs> Praise God, we ain't got it, so we pray God to get rid of it, amen. amen. Let's bind that thing up and get rid of yes, it. Yes, we'll Jesus bind that thing up and get rid of it, amen. Yeah. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and uh, we're just going to have a good time in Ricky. the Lord this morning. Ricky. Hallelujah. Yes. I have an urgent prayer request. My sister's grandson was playing football uh, easily high Friday night. He tackled this little boy, and the little boy came down and kicked him in the side, and it crushed the top of his kidney. Oh, he's no. in ICU. They're trying to save his kidney, but he's bleeding internally. He's been here since Friday mm -hmm. night. So, What's his name, baby? Landon. Landon? Landon Segui. Landon. Mm -hmm. We need to pray. Yeah. Tracer? Paula's little Tracer. Tracer. Yeah, I was wondering about him, so he had to go back last night. Okay, we're going to pray, praise God. Sue's friend committed suicide. Yeah, I was raised up with him on our street. Uh, his name's Jackie, and uh, she called me and told me yesterday. I just uh, just hurt me. Your little Sammy's here, ain't he? No. Oh, that's his little brother. I thought it was little Sammy. He was all excited. Look at him. He looks like his brother. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer and uh, just be led by the Lord today. We want the Holy Ghost just to come in here and have his way in this service. You're going to get that job in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. Amen. Good to see my neighbor here. Praise God. Good to see my mother here. Yeah. Good to see a piano player back here. We love him. Yeah. Uh -huh. I've been praying for a piano player. God's going to move. He's, he's, he's going to move. I know he is. He's a mighty God. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you right now. Uh, I want everybody just to stand up right where you at, and I want y'all to help me pray right where you at. I want you to start talking to God. If you've got situation in your life, in your family, lost loved ones, things going on, I want you to present them to God right now where you at, <coughs> that God's going to touch and meet needs, those who can stand up and uh, meet needs. Praise God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you and we praise you and we worship you this morning. We magnify you, God. We honor you. We give you all glory. We come in here to praise and to worship you because you're our king, you're our God, and we worship you and we praise you this morning. We honor, we give you honor and praise this morning, God, in Jesus' name. And Lord, there are many needs in this congregation this morning, God, and you're a God that can meet every one of them, God. There's not one need in here that you cannot meet, uh, and we're praying, God, you're going to meet every one of them. And God, when they're met, uh, God will give you the glory. They'll give you the glory, God, uh, of the need uh, that's met, uh, wherever it be of uh, uh, infirmity, sickness in their body, where it be an injury, they'll be healed, God, in Jesus' name. Where there be a spiritual uh, 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 revival in their heart, let it happen, God, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh Lord, we praise you and we worship you this morning. Lord, I loose one angels, uh, tear down strongholds and prepare the way for the service this morning. I pray the uh, choir's anointed in a mighty way. I, I pray our sister, uh, uh, that anointing flows through her and goes and meets uh, uh, the congregation uh, spiritual needs this morning. Your word is truth and it goes over that internet. We thank you for the internet this morning, God. We thank you for those people, God, that's come uh, this morning, God. We thank you for our visitors.
ministers this morning, God. We thank you for the website to, that we can minister all over the world this morning, God. In Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, you are king, you are master, you are Lord, and we love you this morning, God. I pray for Tracer right now. Tracer had to go back to the hospital, Lord. Lord, his whole little life, uh, he's just a little innocent little boy. His whole life, God, uh, he's had to be in and out the hospital. I pray you'll miraculously heal his body totally, God, in Jesus' name. I pray you're going to touch little Sammy and heal his body, God, in Jesus' name. Lord, this young man, Landrum, uh, Lord, I lift him up to you, God. He was hurt in the football uh, accident Friday night, that uh, kidney. Heal that kidney right now, God. Uh, let the bleeding stop right now, God. Save his kidney, God, and uh, let him come out of that hospital healthy, God. In the name of Jesus, let it come forth, God. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. I pray you be with the, uh, uh, the Powell family, Lord, uh, the loss of Jackie, Lord. Uh, I lift them up to you right now, God. Uh, be with them, God. Uh, help them and comfort them during this time, God. In Jesus' name, Lord. And, Lord, I pray right now, God, uh, for each and every one in here uh, this morning, God. I pray you put health upon everybody in here, God. And I pray for those that's out sick uh, with some of the uh, stuff going on. Uh, Lord, I lift them up to you, uh, Sister Sue, I pray you heal her body. I, I lift them up to you, God. And Lord, each one of us in here this morning has lost loved ones. I pray in the name of Jesus that you touch them, God, in a mighty way, that you draw them to the cross the way you did us, God. Lord, you called us, God, uh, and we received uh, uh, that calling, God. I pray you'll call uh, our lost loved ones to the cross, God, uh, uh, to the altar, God. Uh, we all had to go, God. We all had to go down to the altar, God. I pray, God, uh, uh, the pride and, and the attitudes uh, uh, will just change and be humble before the King of kings and the Lord of lords because one day every knee shall bow, God, because you are king. We thank you for what you're going to do uh, this morning. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way in this service this morning. We surrender to you. We submit to you, God, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we bow down to you. You are king, and we worship you. We magnify you and glorify you this morning, God, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for the peace of Jerusalem also, God, in Jesus' name. Be with those people in Syria, those Christians, God, that's losing their life, uh, the enemy of this world come upon the enemy of this world, God. And Lord, it's your will that even they would be saved. Save them, God. Help them, God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Glory Praise God. God. Mm. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Brother Few. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many is ready to worship the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Lord, we just praise you for this opportunity, another opportunity to lift up your name. Praise God. Hallelujah. The name we're lifting up this morning is the name that's worthy. Hallelujah. He's the one that died for us. He loved us so much, he was willing to die. Amen. Hallelujah. He's worthy of our praise this morning. Hallelujah. Nobody but Jesus.
Well, I'm 
believe this morning that you want to go around and greet your brothers and sisters in the Lord. We have visitors here this morning, some for the first time and some for the second or third or whatever, but I think we need to just move around and be friendly and just welcome them into the house of God this morning as we're here to worship Him together. Amen. Feeling so much better
like my Jesus.
singing glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me, glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me, I say glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me, I know. Singing glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. I say glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. You must have been the hand. Come on, give me some praise in the house. Hallelujah. Did he give you the Holy Ghost? Has he proven to you that he's your friend? Hallelujah. That you can trust in him? Hallelujah. Man will let you down, but he will never let you down. Amen. He'll always be there. Hallelujah. He's only a call away. Praise God. Hallelujah. He deserves our praise in the house today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I think uh, what we're trying to do this morning, too, is uh, we got, we'll got have children's church going on here, but uh, we want to try to keep the, the ones 12 years old or older in the sanctuary on Sunday morning. We'd like for them to be uh, uh, under the word at least uh, one time during the week, so... Uh, Brother Rory wanted some of that going on too, so uh, we'll try to keep the 12 years old or older in here so they can hear the word, amen, then the younger ones uh, get to go to children's church, and of course during the week, Sunday night and Wednesday night, I believe uh, uh, a normal procedure there for the, for the young folks, amen. Brother Ronnie. Dear Lord, we come before your throne this morning thanking you, God, for your mercy and your grace. God, we thank you for every blessing of life that you've given us, God, for our homes and our families, Father, for food to eat and clothes on our back this morning, God. And we just praise you and we just worship your holy name, God. We thank you for your presence that's here in our midst this morning, God. Lord, we, we never take it lightly being in your presence, Lord. And Lord, we just pray that you'll move the rest of the service, God, to meet needs and touch people. Now, Father, as we pass among the congregation. We pray that you will bless those that have to give and those that have not, Father, and use this offering to upbuild the kingdom of Jesus Christ and to spread the good news to a lost and dying world. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray and ask it. Amen. Praise God. Brother. <laughs>
Amen. Praise God. Am I on? Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. He'll always show up and he'll always take you through the fire again. Doesn't mean that you're going to be a, a long lull without the enemy attacking again. But we know that God in us and God with us keeps us and keeps us safe from the enemy's attacks. 
This morning, I, well, I was actually one day, two weeks ago, I was kind of ministering to the Lord and, and he was ministering to me and he said, I want you to do a message and he gave me the title. And uh, the title is Loneliness. Now, I know that there are a lot of people who are lonely even when they're surrounded by many people. But there are cases in the Bible, examples in the Bible, where men of God in the Bible and those that had the promises and had all of God's God with them as they traveled and as they went through this life that they went through, they were lonely at times. And I have some examples this morning. I don't know how many we'll get to, but the first one we're going to is in... um, Genesis 32, 22 through 31. Now, loneliness means low spirits due to lack of companionship or depressed because you're alone or even those who feel deserted. Sometimes there's not any desertion going on, but you feel that way. Sometimes you feel like you're alone, but you're not really alone. These others that are there to help you or or will pray for you, but there are those lonely times when it's just you and God alone. And that is the answer to any kind of loneliness is the Lord Jesus Christ. Genesis 32, starting with verse 22 That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons, and they crossed the ford to the Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent that he had. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. I want to ask you, have you ever wrestled with God? Has God got a plan for your life and you have wrestled with him over it? Because of circumstances, because of problems that are in your life or things that are going on around you? Well, here, this man that wrestled with Jacob until the dawn, here in this in the Hebrew is ish, or you could say is God, or God-man. And I declare to you this morning that this is a visible manifestation of Jesus himself visiting with Jacob. Verse 25. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh or his hip socket, we could say, was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said... Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he, Jacob, said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Sometimes we don't pray through. Sometimes we just keep on praying, but all of a sudden we give up because things don't turn the way that we thought they should be. They don't turn out that way. He also, Jacob, we know, needed help desperately. He was getting ready to meet his brother, Esau. And he had done some things to his brother and he, had, he knew that his brother was wanting to kill him when he left and, and uh, left Canaan. And when he left, he was running for his life. So this time, God had spoken to him and we're coming to those scriptures in a minute. God had spoken to him and said, go back to Canaan, go back. And so Jacob was fearful. He was very afraid of his brother because his brother had already declared the fact that he was going to kill him. And so he said unto him in verse uh, 27, and he said unto him, what is thy name? And Jacob said, Jacob, which means heel catcher or we could say deceitful one. Uh, Some places it's called supplanter or deceiver. And, of course, we know that Jesus knew who he was, the Lord that was with him there. He knew who he was, and he was wrestling with him because there was something that he wanted to do in his life. He wanted to make a change in his life. But he just wanted to hear Jacob say it out of his own mouth. I'm a a heel catcher. 
I'm a deceitful one. I'm, I'm a, a, a supplanter. I'm a deceiver. Jacob needed help desperately, but before he gained it, he had to confess his sin, which was symbolized by his name. Verse 28. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, a prince of God. For as prince, thou hast had power with God and with men and hast prevailed or won success. So he's going to change his name from Jacob to Israel, a prince of God. Number 29. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? Or can you be so ignorant not, as not to know who I am? I am here wrestling with you. You have come to seek God. You were alone. You were going to let all of your family and everything that you had go and face, face Esau before you faced him. You're here in fear is what he's saying. And, and why should you ask my name? You should know who I am. He, he, he was his blessed redeemer. He was the Lord that was there with him all the time. And so the Bible says in the last part of verse 29, and he blessed him there. Verse 30, and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, which means the face of God. For I have seen God face to face, he says, and my life is, is, my life is preserved. Verse 31, and he passed over Peniel and the sun rose upon him. Sunrise, sunshine within and sunshine without. And he halted and limped upon his thigh. When he left there, that encounter with the Lord that day, he left with the sun shining on his face. He had been in the presence of God. He had been in the presence of his Redeemer. He had had the opportunity to have an encounter with Jesus Christ, the God-man. And we know that Jacob by nature was surplanter, but by grace now he is the heir of the covenant. His name has been changed. Jacob had already received a prophetic from, word from God in Genesis 28 where he had given him the promises, reminded him of the promises of his father Abraham and Isaac. And he had these promises to go by. But at this point in time, he was felt all alone. He knew that he was going to have to face danger or he was sure of it in his own mind. God had called Jacob back to Canaan, the land of his kindred. I'm going to read uh, Genesis 31, 3 and 13. Then the Lord said to Jacob, go back to the land of your fathers and to your relatives and I will be with you. What did he say? You go back and I'll be with you. A lot of times when we have an encounter with, with things in our lives that cause us problems and distress, and cause us to have loneliness in our lives. The Lord is saying, just, just go back. Remember what I've already promised you. Remember what, your words, what, what my word says. And then in verse 13, he says, I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now leave this land at once and go to your native land. Now Jacob, full of cares and fear about meeting Esau, the first thing he did was he prayed. And let's look at Genesis 32, 9 through 13. And I'm going to read that prayer. Very important prayer. Then Jacob prayed, O God, my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, Lord, you who said to me, go back to your country and your relatives and I will make you prosper. I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown your servant. I had only my staff when I crossed this Jordan, but now I have become two camps. Save me, I pray, from the hand of my brother Esau, for I am afraid he will come and attack me and also the mothers with their children. That night, 
Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. But you have said, I will surely make you prosper and will make you descendants like the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered. He spent the night there and from what he had with him, his select, he selected a gift for his brother Esau. Now, at the beginning, of course, after this prayer, before his encounter, he was sending everything he had and even his family in front of him and he was hiding out when he had the encounter. He was, he was going to put them in danger first because he was the promised part of the promised seed. And he, he was afraid also. But after he had the visitation and he had the encounter with the God-man, with the Lord, he asserted God's lordship over his life and claimed the promises God gave him at Bethel and at Haran. The road which Jacob now pursued was the path of duty because God had prescribed it. Now, instead of remaining behind his family for safety, he limped ahead them all and met with his brother. Can you see that picture? He was going to lag behind. He was going to see if the rest of them got killed first. And then he also put uh, Rachel at the end, her and her children, but he was still going to follow at the very end of the caravan. But now, since the sun shined on his face, since that radiance from the presence and the meeting with the, with the Lord himself, now he has, instead of remaining behind them, he's going in front of them. He's leading it. And he meets him face to face. He had purpose now. He no longer was a supplanter or a deceiver. And now his name was Israel, which means prince of God. And some interpret that as contender with God. Little did Jacob know when he confronted his brother Esau that God had already turned the hate in Esau around for love for his brother. And then there was a great reconciliation between him and his brother. And from what I understand, that is the first rec reconciliation of strife between brothers that's mentioned in the Bible. We seek God in our loneliness. If we do, then we're going to come out with the sunshine on our face. If we seek him and spend time with him and get in his presence. If I can't can't explain to you or can't get into you anything else in this ministry and in my preaching, I want you to know it is so important to have that relationship with the Lord. He didn't go to all the gods that his ancestors served at one time. He didn't go on to, on to those gods. He went to the true and living God for help. We know that in God's presence, there's joy unspeakable and full of glory. And then when we know, when we leave that place of prayer and surrender and forgiveness, we know we have experienced God. There's nothing like being in his presence. There's nothing like experiencing God getting you out of the mess that you're in. A lot of times we bring things on ourselves, but there's sometimes that we don't. Sometimes things go on around us that we have no control over. And, and if we try to go to our brothers and sisters, a lot of times they will pray for us and that's wonderful and they will care for us, but not like the Lord does and not like the Lord who makes changes in our lives. There are others in scriptures who face loneliness, 
There was Joseph in weeping when he found out who his brothers were. I'm not going to that scripture. Then there was Elijah in discouragement. And if you will, um, would you pull up 1 Kings 19, 1 through 14 in in NIV, please? Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with a sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life, and when he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and he came to a broom bush, sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, he said. Have you ever been there? God, just take me on. It would be better off if I was just go on now instead of having to remain in the situation that I'm in. Let me die. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors, is what he said. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. And all at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. You know, God doesn't have any problem with us saying, I just want to die. You know, just take my life. Let me go. You know, I I, I don't want to have to face what I have to face in life. It'll be a lot better off up there. uh, And and with you now, Lord, than it would be for me to have to deal with this that's going on around me. Many of us feel that way at times. I I imagine that you do. I have (laughs) felt that way. I've had pity parties. I've had times when I've felt very alone. And, um, but God sent an angel to him. He always sends something to help us to change our situation. It might, it takes a little while it did with Elijah. I mean, he had already destroyed all the prophets of Baal and he had burned down their altars through his calling a fire down out of heaven. And sometimes in ministry, when you have a big successful, uh, ministry or a big set successful a uh, time of uh, preaching or, or or praying and seeing God move and 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 seeing God move in in every situation and all of a sudden you just get down in the dumps that's what we say in Piedmont get down in the dumps you feel lonely feel all alone Then all of a sudden, when you go to God and his presence comes upon you, or God can send angels to you too. I'm not saying he can't. But there are times when I'll get a text and it's very encouraging from somebody. And it'll be just what I needed to hear at that time. But God sent an angel to him and he said, he touched him and he said, get up and eat. And he looked around, verse 6, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. And he ate and drank, and then he lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. God knows when things are a little bit too hard for you, and he he will give you a break at times. I've seen more fire come against, more warfare against Christians now than I've ever seen in all of my life as a Christian. And I believe it's because Jesus is getting ready to come and relieve us from all of that. I believe that he is stand, almost standing by the Father and saying, let me go now. And the Father said, wait, it's not time yet. There's a few more souls that need to come into the kingdom and I want to use my children to reach their lives And by the way, I appreciate everybody that works in this church. Those that are so willing to go in the nursery. Those that are willing to to take a class. Those that are willing to to work 
and do things, clean the buildings. And those that are so willing to do those things and they never ask for any praise for what they do. But it's all together one body, working together in one accord. Trying to reach lost souls, whether it's on the internet or whether it's in our community, whether it's on your job or whether it's people coming into the house of God, into the church. Verse 8, so he got up and ate and drank and strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night and the word of the Lord come to, came to him. He says, what are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing in the cave? Why are you hiding out? You know, God sent him there. He knew what he wanted to do for him. He knew the change he wanted to bring upon him, but he could not do it until he surrendered. Verse 10, he replied, I have been very zealous or jealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with a sword, and I am the only one left. Have you ever felt that way? I'm really the only one that really loves you, God, and I am the only one that is going through all this, but I am the only one, Lord, that you have here that is still standing. And now they're trying to kill me too, he says. In verse 11, the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in that earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. And the King James says, a still, small voice. That's what we're looking for. We're not looking for noise, although we can get noise. We're looking for that voice of God. He replied, I have been very zealous, very jealous for the Lord God Almighty and the Israelites have rejected your covenant. This is in verse 14. Torn down your altars, but your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left and now they're trying to kill me. But God gave him an answer. He said, I have 7,000 that have not bowed their knee to Baal. There are other people out there. There are other people that are out there serving the Lord. And and we get discouraged sometimes and we think, well, there's not many people that are really willing to serve God 100%. But he was saying, I got 7,000 out there. Then we find the loneliness of Jeremiah in witnessing. Jeremiah fifteen seventeen. he says, I never sat in the company of revelers, those who make merry, never made merry with them. I sat alone because of your powerful hand was upon me and you have filled me with indignation. I'm in ministry and I'm all alone. Then there was Nehemiah in a night vigil. There was Christ in agony in the garden. Then there was Paul in prison. This is my last verse, 2 Timothy 4, 16. At my first events, not one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. Paul was alone in prison. He was feeling loneliness. Today, I'm sure there are those here that have felt loneliness and and it felt like that God really didn't care and that, that you prayed a lot and you sought the Lord and you, you just didn't feel, you didn't see a change come. But I'm telling you this morning, 
God loves you. And he cares about you and he wants to give you an experience with him that will cause things around you to change. But what we have to do is one thing is we have to forgive. If we don't forgive those that have harmed us or hurt us in any way, then we cannot carry on and receive that full release, that full deliverance if we don't, if we don't forgive. I'd like to, I want you to just bow your heads and close your eyes and eyes, no looking around, please. Um, I just want you, if you will just repeat this prayer after me. If anyone has ever hurt you, harmed you, abused you, or rejected you, or deserted you, and you've had a hard time getting over it, I want you to just Repeat this prayer after me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus and as an act of my will, I forgive those who have hurt me in any way. I forgive them whether they deserve it or not because you forgave me when I didn't deserve it. I ask you to love them through me in Jesus' name. And now I want to mention this, that Geraldine is, is having surgery Thursday. And, uh, and, and so if anyone besides her would like to come up, and, and Geraldine, you come too, and let us pray for you if you're sick in your body, you need a touch. Or if you're just going through loneliness and you've, any kind of desertion or depression. And it could be that you're a minister and you're trying to follow God and you're feeling lonely in that. I want to ask you to come now and I want to ask that our prayer, people who pray to come up and let's pray for you. God loves you so much. He wants you when you leave today that for there to be a change. My prayer is that you won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Can you uh, put, I need you more? Do you have that? <clears throat> those are sick. I want to pray for you first. And uh, all of those that will help us pray, pray for them first. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Geraldine, Father. Lord, as she faces this surgery Thursday, I ask you, Lord, that you would just guide the surgeon's hands and in all of the correction that needs to be done will be done. And, Father God, that it will be a quick recovery and, Father, no complications in Jesus' name. Just touch and heal. I pray that when they get in there, they'll realize that it's not as bad as they thought it was, Father. And I ask you, Father, just to give her 